has nothing doing with hypocrisy, with insincerity, or with pretense. An old man that even God said, Joshua, you are old and stricken in age. Was he looking for to play politics? Was he looking for to have insincerity? An old man who knows that one step, he might step out of the earth and go to the great beyond. What's he going to pretend about? What's he going to be procured about now? That Joshua knew. He knew that his time was about up. And he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't have to go and ask his wife. Now I'm going to talk to the elders in Israel. And it may come to the point I will say, we will serve the Lord. Can I have your heart? He already knew the heart of the wife. The children, I, I'm going to talk to the leaders and elders of Israel. And I'm, I might say that me and my house and my children, my wife, we will serve the Lord. Can I say that? Am I saying your mind? He knew his children, not like Eli, who did not know the heart, the lie, the depravity, the corruption in the heart of his own children. He knew so he could say without any feeling of what if they do not agree. No, Joshua knew his family. You must know your family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's something here from chapter 1 to chapter 23. If you just read all those chapters and see how Joshua went from place to place and he walked sometimes all night and you see him as a person that carried the responsibility of the nation and wanting all these nations to be conquered for the children of Israel. You would not have known that he was a married man. You would not have known that he was a father of children. When a man is called of God, and then if I were not married, I would have done that. But I cannot because now I am married. Joshua served the Lord in all sincerity, with all his heart, with all his mind. And he was not tied down by wife and children. You know, when you read the Bible and you want to follow the Bible and you're not following what, you know, the people expect, you know, that consecration does not become less just because you're married. Now, since we see the example of Joshua, I think I need to talk to you. Are you ready? You are not all ready. You know, when we started 1973, I wasn't married. And I could go here, go there, jump there, jump there. And then I got married. On the day of the marriage, we had follow-up to do, work to do. Saturday, we finished the wedding. And instead of going for honeymoon somewhere, somehow, I went straight from that wedding to the place where are gathering the workers together and telling them of the follow-up we had to do. That's the way it was at that time. And now, after marriage, my consecration remains the same. My commitment remains the same. And my wife, has to run after me. Even when I would say as a woman, I think you need some rest. She says, no, where you are, I am. And where you go, I go. 
don't tell me to sit down. I say, but look at, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we can, I could be we physically too, and there are times, and we physically, and yet she will not stay behind. That is the family of a militant person going on to fulfill the will of God that God has called him. That will came before you were married and that assignment came before you were married. Now that you are married, that marriage should not tie you down, pin you down and hinder you from going on. We will go on. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What an encouragement for the husband. When the wife is saying, don't slow down because of me, go ahead. And I am by your side. I pray the Lord will give every one of us such families in Jesus' name. We're coming now to number two. Number two is entire consecration to serve the Lord with absolute surrender and trust. We're looking at Joshua chapter 24, and we're reading from verse 16. In verse 16, the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve all the gods. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, for the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through which we pass look at verse 18 verse 18 and the lord drave out from before us all the people even the amorites which dwell in the land wherefore we will also serve the lord for he is our god the leader and the led the pioneer pursuing and the people pursuing after and the captain saying i will serve the lord my wife will serve the lord and children will serve the lord and the believers the christians and the members of the congregation everyone you're doing evangelism will do evangelism too you are planting churches select us choose us we're going to be pastors in those churches missionaries are going out and we know that there are places where missionaries still need to go we also will serve the lord for he is our god the fire of consecration revival evangelism church planting will never stop in our church in jesus name we shouldn't only be talking to the youth about educational success evangelism success too we shouldn't only be talking to the youth about natural physical progress we should be talking to them to about spiritual progress about how they will take the light of the gospel the work of the lord in their hand it's not just for them to have a certificate just for them to have all these uh, human things that other people in the world also have but to have the zeal to evangelize, the zeal to edify the church, the zeal to make the gospel reach out to the regions beyond, that both the older ones and the younger ones, both the adult and the youth and the children will know the most important is to preach the gospel and to live for God for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world what shall it profit 
a youth, a child, if they shall gain the whole world and lose their souls and lose the souls of the people around them, they need to reach out to so our themes for the youth impact should not only center on you know academic excellence academic success and then the minds of those children they are glued on only success physical but something spiritual that they will understand in bible days in contemporary times and in history children and youth have been used in giving in taking the gospel to other parts of the world in fact in fact there are churches that will send their youth out during their long vacation and they send them out to take the gospel short term missionary work and we should understand our youths our children are not just for you know the physical thing and the physical success and the scientific you know breakthrough they are also number one in their lives should be the preaching of the gospel and the living out of the gospel it will happen if there is a change in the mindset of the leaders of the youth, if there is a change in the mindset of those who are crafting out the programs for the young people, then the young people will know that as daddies and mommies are carrying the gospel and taking it to regions beyond, we young people too, the same responsibility is upon us and we have entire consecration to serve the Lord with absolute surrender and trust. We're coming to number three here. Number three is enduring condition of separation unto God with sanctification and transparency. Joshua chapter 24, reading from verse 22, and Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourself that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. It's not by coercion. You are voluntarily giving yourself that you are going to serve. And they said, we are witnesses. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you. And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. He said, here is Joshua talking to think about that Israel at this time, at the end of Joshua. All the chapters were gone through, and he knew there was still some little, little, little idols there. And now he told them, put away the strange gods. And the people did not say, Joshua old man what are you talking about we are the people of no and our hearts will check up anything that will hold dear dearer than the almighty god anything that comes first in our lives it says take that away all the things that make god relegated to the background that the business is number one. That's idolatry. Covetousness, which is idolatry. The pursuit of the things of the earth is idolatry. And making anything physical beyond higher than the things spiritual, having our heart, having our intention on position in the church beyond the penetrating gospel we need to take away to the gentiles that's idolatry and anything that makes us feel unhappy and sad when somebody maybe insults us but 
when they insult our Christ like that, we don't feel anything. You know? And when they slap our Savior, they don't feel anything, but if they slap us on the face, if they do anything against us, we take that serious. And yet those indignities are being done to the Almighty God, even in places of worship. Yet we turn the other eye. But if it's done, it gives us, we uh, exalt our own pleasure our own dignity above the sovereignty of the almighty god that's idolatry and he says we check our hearts we check our mind and we check everything and we take this strange attitude this strange gods in our heart away and incline your heart unto the lord God of Israel. Verse 24. Verse 24. The people were not offended at the approach of Joshua. They did not give it back to him. He said that we will do this in return. There's no church there anymore. If we fight the message, the messenger, the minister, because he spoke tough, we too will react against him tough. What are we doing? And we political parties and different parties, different kinds? No. The people did not react negatively. The people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God, we will serve. And his voice we will obey. Somebody shout amen. amen. We come to point number three. Point number three, final redirection towards heavenly home going for rest and for rewards. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, readiness for death and departure to heaven. Readiness. And we should be ready every time. We should be ready every time. Ready. Readiness for death and departure to heaven. Number two, realization after death and departure into the hereafter, into the great beyond. Number three, remembering the death and departure of all humans it will come to everyone let's look at number one number one readiness for this and departure to heaven we're looking at joshua chapter 24 reading from verse 25 in verse 25 it says so joshua made a covenant with the people that day and he said them a statute and an ordinance in shaking reading this you love it remember once again there's an old man aged and stricken in years and yet he did not even dedicate that to other people elisa i think you still have the physical so come and do this one and then this leader and that leader and then he just sits on the rocking uh, chair and it says uh, everybody will understand maybe they will understand but god will he understand so joshua made a covenant with the people that day and he set them a statute he set them the standard this is the way to follow look at verse 26 in verse 26 and joshua wrote uh -uh. and joshua wrote and joshua wrote at that age, everything that still needed to be done. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord in verse 27. Verse 27, and Joshua said unto all the people, Behold the stone. 
shall be a witness unto us for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us it shall be therefore a witness unto you lest ye deny your God is concern is preoccupation his mind, his heart was still that the nation, the elders, the elderly, and the middle aged, and the young, the men and the women, is that they will not deny the Lord their God. It tells us in verse 28, in verse 28, so Joshua, let the people depart every man to his inheritance verse 29 in verse 29 and it came to pass after these things that joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the lord died he did he was walking to the time of his departure he was establishing the standard to the time of his departure. He was taking the brunt of the work and the heavy load to the time of his departure. After all these things that he had to do, that he did, that the servant of the Lord died, being a hundred and ten years old. Amen. 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 Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Here is uh, Paul the Apostle. This was his last epistle. And was about to go now. It was ready to go. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2. Verse 2. Preach the word. Timothy, preach the word. Titus, preach the word. Anyone that will read this, hear with the parting words of Paul the Apostle, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, without long suffering and doctrine. Then in verse 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own laws shall they heave to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. In verse 5, Whatever the condition spiritual, whatever the condition political, whatever the condition natural, in those days here Timothy here is your watch word watch thou in all things and deal afflictions do the work of an evangelism make full proof of thy ministry look at verse 6 in verse 6 for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand yet even though he knew the time of my departure is at hand he still preached and exhorted and instructed and charged even the way you would have done it 20 years 30 years earlier he still did the same thing when this time of departure was approaching for i'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is certain look at verse 7 it says i have fought a good fight i'm still fighting the good fight i have finished my course and i've kept the faith verse 8 verse 8 says henceforth the race laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them that's where you're coming 
it will be given to you too. To all them also that love is appearing. We're looking at number two. Number two is realization after death and departure into the hereafter. Let's look at Joshua chapter 24, verse 30. And they buried him, but they did not bury the word. And they buried him, they did not bury the standard. And they buried him, they did not bury the conviction. And they buried him, they did not bury all the sermons, all the exhortations, and everything he had given them. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Sarah, which is in Mount Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gash. Look at verse 31. And Israel served the Lord. They did not bury the service of the Lord of Joshua. They did not bury the consecration of Joshua. They did not bury the commitment of Joshua. They did not bury the great commission of Joshua. Joshua died and Joshua was buried. And the, all Israel, they, they, they served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that overlived uh, Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. We will we'll serve the Lord till he comes in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three, remembering the death and the departure of all humans we should remember that not only joshua but others too in joshua chapter 24 verse 32 and the bones of joseph which the children of israel brought up out of egypt they buried in shechem in a parcel of ground which jacob bought of the sons of Hamon, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Sanctified Joseph, he died too. And now they buried, he had died before they even came to the land of Canaan. They carried the bulls. And they buried the bones there. Good people die. They go to their reward. Righteous people die. They go to their reward. Uncompromising people, Josephs, they die and they go to their reward. And those who are serving with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, they serve. And eventually they depart from earth and they go to the great beyond. It happens to all humans. 